Section 8 of Weird Tales presents Asylum Atrocities. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Lee Vogler. Weird Tales presents Asylum Atrocities. A Mind in Shadow by Tacita Swings. I can't keep it any longer, Doctor. I must tell. It's too much for a boy to keep to himself. I can't tell my mother, because it's so terrible. And I haven't any dad, any more. And you know me since I'm born. I, I, oh, doctor, please come nearer. I don't want to say it out loud. I guess I, I'm a murderer. Yes, don't be frightened. But I killed my baby brother. I killed Freddy, not once, but twice. You see, I'm, what I said, and I'm only fifteen years old. No, no, doctor. I'm not feverish any more. I know what I'm talking about. I'm almost well. You said so yourself. It's five weeks, isn't it, that I've had this brain fever? I guess, doctor, it's because I've had this all on my mind, and telling it will help me, truly and honest. Just let me hold your hand and tell you. And please listen, and listen hard. "'Cause I'm going to tell you just how everything happened. "'You know how I loved my little brother, and he was crazy about me. "'I honestly liked to take him out in his carriage "'and show him off to the other kids on the block. "'Cause Freddy was the cutest and smartest and brightest. "'Say, doctor, you ought to know. "'You helped when he was born. "'Wasn't he a wonderful kid? "'Oh, doctor, I didn't mean any harm. "'You know that. "'And I guess he... He up there knows, too. Where was I? Oh, yes. Well, I used to take him in his carriage up that little hill. Then I'd run down ahead and be ready to catch him, with my arms open like this, see? And Freddy'd clap his hands and make such cute, funny little noises, cause he was having such a bully time. Kick his fat legs like he always wanted some more of that game and his blue eyes be big and happy and shining, and then, please hold my hand tight, now comes the hard part to tell. Well, one day, the carriage came down the hill, and there was, was a stone, and I didn't see it, and the carriage bumped up sharp, and Freddy fell out, sideways. Oh, doctor, you don't know how scared. I was scared so stiff. I couldn't move for maybe two hours. Only I suppose it wasn't so long anyhow, but honestly, it seemed so, cause I couldn't make my legs go, and I got most awful cold, and I could only look at baby on the ground. At last I saw Freddy's arm move, then the ice in my legs melted like, and I could go to little Freddy and pick him up, but his eyes were closed just like he was asleep, and I waited for him to wake up. Well, he did wake up. Oh, yes, he woke up and I thought everything was all right. Next day I licked a guy who did that carriage-catching stunt with his baby sister and told him he might kill her. You see, doctor, some of us kids don't think until something happens, and that was me too. No, doctor, that isn't all. I was just thinking. Now please, will you listen some more? Well, when I came home from school next day, Freddy didn't smile at me and stretch out his arms. He didn't make those cunning little noises like goo-goo. He didn't know me. Mama said he didn't seem to be sick. She couldn't make it out. And she got awful worried because, you see, he didn't even know Mama. We waited another day and watched, and then she sent for you. You remember you examined him and you felt him all over, and you kept shaking your head. Then he felt his head all over again, and he looked sad and asked if he'd had a fall. Oh, doctor, I was terribly scared. I was hiding on the stairs and shaking something awful. No, please, doctor, I won't work myself into a fever again. It does me good to tell it. Honest, it does. If you'd only let me get it off my mind, and please listen. Yes, I'll take it easy. Let me see. What was I saying? Oh, yes. Mama told you how careful and trustworthy I was, and that nothing could happen to baby in my care. That made me feel worse yet, and I started to tell and cried out, only it was a funny thing, that no sound came from my throat, because it felt so tight, like I'd swallowed something too big and it stuck there. 
Well, I couldn't eat any more, and I couldn't play, and I couldn't study, and I felt awful sick and miserable. I hardly talked any more. All I could do was just watch Freddy and wait for him to notice things. But his blue eyes were always like, like a candle was blown out behind them. He was coming all the time and looked awful sad and sorry and shook your head a lot and talked more about Freddy's head. And one day you put your hand on my mother's shoulder and said something low about being afraid for baby's mind. You remember how excited Mama got? and she looked terrible white and yelled out, It can't be. I won't believe it. God couldn't let the bright little spirit of this child be killed. That's what Mama said. I remember it, you see, because the way she said it made me get cold all over, and I shivered, especially about the killing. Because, cause you see, I c c killed Freddy's b bright little spirit, and you know how I l loved him. No, I'm not crying. It's only awful sad for Freddy and p p poor little Mama and me, too. And yes, I'll take the medicine now, Doctor. Now, can I go on? No, it won't hurt me. What was I saying? Let me think a minute. Oh, yes. I heard a neighbor say to another lady, Isn't it awful for that poor bright child to be an idiot? They said he should have been killed outright rather than be an idiot and they said it was God's blessing my mother had me to comfort her. When I heard that, I locked myself into my room and told God I wasn't a blessing. I was a murderer of a bright little spirit, and that he ought to let me die because I was wicked. I got thinking, and thinking terrible things, until my head ached something awful, and I guess I was very weak from not eating. Next thing I knew, he was saying I had diphtheria. The worst of it was... I couldn't have Freddy with me any more. I couldn't kiss him good night. You wouldn't even let me see him, cause you said my sickness was very catching, and if Freddy got my breath, he'd die. Then I thought maybe now I'd soon be dead like I told God. I ought to be for punishment. And I wanted to help myself die, so I didn't take the medicine, and didn't mind you, so I got worse, you remember? Well, that's why. You see, doctor? I thought then Mom would feel so bad about Freddy when I told her about the fall that it was better I should help myself to die. Don't you see? Where was I again? Do you remember, Doctor? Oh, yes. Well, once I woke up and Mama was kneeling by my bed, I guess she was praying because she said, Oh, dear God, have mercy. Spare this one of sound mind. Don't take this one, not this one, not this one. She kept saying that over and over like she wanted the other one taken. Well, doctor, I had to do a whole lot more thinking after that until my head ached. But I was too tired out to talk anyway, and only sometimes when I come back from far away, like I knew I must try to get better because Mama wanted it, but I heard things. I heard nurse say one day it would be a blessing if the other child, Freddy, you know, could die on a bed of sickness instead of me. You said to her something about you wished you could be brave enough to let the other child catch it and die on a bed of sickness and put it out of its misery, but you shook your head sorry-like and said that not many men were brave enough for that. Ouch, doctor, you're pressing my hand too hard now, please. Don't look so angry. Was it wrong of me to listen that time? You see, I couldn't help listening. Don't you want me to tell this part? I'm only telling you. All right. After that, I guess I was feverish a whole lot, because I had terrible dreams about putting Freddy out of his misery. And even when I could think, it was always that, if I killed Freddy's bright little spirit, maybe I should be that person brave enough to put him out of his misery. And maybe then I'd be forgiven, and everybody'd know that it was because I loved Mama and Freddy so much. I did an awful lot of thinking about the blessing if he could die in a bed of sickness and about catching my disease, and little by little I had it all thought out. Yes, doctor, I know you said I was in high fever, but I tell you, all the same, I thought it out just as plain as plain can be. Now please wait, doctor. There's more coming. I'm feeling all right. Truly I am. Just feel my pulse. See? Oh, all right. I'll rest a minute. Now can I go on? 
One night, Mama took Nurse's place, and cause I guess she was so tired worrying about everything, she fell tight asleep, so no one was watching, and something in my head kept saying, Now is the time. Be brave. Put him out of his misery. So I got up and went to Freddy's room. I told him to forgive me, but it would be better for him to die in a bed of sickness, and I was going to help him do it, because I was brave. I put my arms around him and held him tight and kissed him, and kissed him on the mouth and breathed my catching sickness onto his face so he could catch it quick, and then I said goodbye and put him back in his crib. I was awful weak, and I guess I almost fainted, and I dropped him back on the bed so hard that I'm afraid I bumped him too hard, but I guess it didn't matter, because I'd fixed it so he'd be out of his misery soon anyhow. Oh, look, doctor, you dropped a tear on my hand. Are you feeling so sorry? Please hold my hand yet a little while. It makes it easier for me. Well, next day I heard he caught it, and no one knew how he got it, and I don't remember much because everything was sort of confused in my head. Only once I remember hearing someone say it was a miracle and a blessing, so I guess he, he died soon, because you see I gave him the blessing. And then I don't remember anything till I woke up here, and he said I had brain fever. Now you know why. All the same, I wish I was dead, because now I'm not feverish, and I can see I was wicked and not brave. I'm a murderer, and all because I wanted to play a nice game with Freddy in the carriage. Yes, I'm listening to you, doctor. I'm paying attention. What, doctor? I told you in my fever that I let him fall, and he knew before that. You guessed it by my actions? But then, why are you so proud that I told you everything? Oh, I see. Yes, doctor. I'll rest until you come back with the medicine. You back already? Listen, someone's knocking. There's my mama coming, and, and doctor. Am I feverish? Listen, I think I hear Freddy. Freddy? What's the matter? Oh, look, look, there's Freddy. Then he didn't die. He didn't catch it. And he knows me. Look, doctor. Mama, he knows me. Listen, he's making those cute, funny noises. Goo goo, Freddy. He knows me. He knows everything again. Maybe I'm dreaming. Are you sure he's all right? I did it when I bumped him back into his bed. I can't understand. What bone doctor? Oh, never mind. I don't understand all those big doctor words anyhow. I don't care. Freddy's got his bright little spirit again, and everything's all right. I guess I'm some happy guy right now. End of section 8